It's Friday night, and you know what that means. We had a fan-fucking-tastic main event this week, pal. Let's get to it. I'm John Renton with my review of AEW Rampage. J.R. Excalibur and the Grand Wizard himself, Jericho Anson, on commentary. Dax versus Claudio, Ring of Honor World Heavyweight Championship match. If it had been on Dynamite, maybe they wouldn't have lost so many goddamn viewers like they did from the beginning to the very end, even though they did officially over a million. Look at the breakdowns. It's a little bit troubling. That being said, this was a great hook for the Rampage main event, but considering it was taped and everybody knew the results, only the diehards were going to tune in, and that's the thing they need to do with Rampage. They need to find a way to have it live more often, juice things up. Matches like this will help, but they got to find a way. It wasn't a bad edition of Rampage, all things considered, and at least this match deserved to go 20-plus minutes. Hell, had they had this on Ring of Honor pay-per-view, they would have done extra buy rates. They, these two just went down and they fucking tore the house down. It was really, really good shit. I can't wait to talk about it. But first, gotta start at the beginning, because otherwise it will be a weird review. And when we come to the end, stop. <clears throat> so, Darby Allen versus Sammy Guevara with Ty Conte on commentary, and the winner of this Rampage wildcard bitches match faces off against Jan Maxley. Remember when Darby was getting some of the biggest reactions in the company? And yeah, he still does all the moves. He can work. I met the guy at multiple indie shows before he signed with AEW. I mean... You know, credit to him. He's done some great shit, you know, as far as in the ring and everything. He's also a freaking nut outside of it, and the way he does stuff, I don't know if he's going to be walking by the age of 35. He may not want to walk by the age of 35. Who knows? <laughs> Sammy has not meant shit since doing that tremendous springboard cutter against Cody Rose in that ladder match. One of the best uh, spots I have seen in a long goddamn time, regardless of any company. Great fucking shit. And it's been all downhill from there. Partly due to outside the ring stuff, and also partly because inside the ring, the guy has done everything and then some, and has gotten to the point where people just don't care. Some people will be like, yeah, he did this move, and a lot of people, they might boo, but they boo because they want him off of television. They don't want him on their screen. He still has his fans, obviously, but he feels totally cooled off. Um, Ty means absolutely fuck all. Uh, at one point, we got a suplex spot where they held each other and went over to the floor, <laughs> Darby dives a couple times. Later, Anna distracts. We get a low blow. We get the skateboard uh, util utilized where Sammy hits a powerbomb, and it sort of works, sort of doesn't. GTH, one, two, three. This match didn't mean anything, and that's a real sad thing because these two actually meant something at the beginning of Rampage, or, well, the beginning of AEW, even the beginning of Rampage, because Rampage has been going for over a year, and now it feels like these two are stagnant, especially Sammy. <laughs> so... Uh, Samoa Joe comes out, addresses the fans, says you will see more of him, and then Sterling, Tony Nese, and Josh Woods show up. Sterling seems like he's really trying, but this is not very good. Joe says, you know what, you're right about Josh Woods, because Sterling praised Josh Woods. How about we have that match tonight? Josh Woods, who is game and a very good talent, is like, okay, and Sterling's like, no, we'll do it next week. <laughs> All right, you know what, that ought to be a pretty good match. It'll have some shenanigans, unfortunately, <laughs> but it should be pretty good. What was another highlight was Miro with a pre-tape saying, my God, you take the, uh, took the devil from me before I could. Uh, you snuck him out before I could snuff him out. And now you put less deserving people ahead of me. You took uh, my championship off of me. Why would you do that? You need to belt the Redeemer or else, you know, you will pay. He wants to take down God and burn down the gates of heaven. And you know what? I'm all for that. This is great shit. Utilize Miro. Hell, he should have been in that tournament. They should have expanded it and had Miro um, involved in this. Even if he only won one match and lost, like in the semifinals or however they set up, Miro deserved a shot. And apparently Sting's just disappeared. I don't know what the fuck happened there. So we get Serena D versus Madison Rain. Oh, right. Well, they tried. Um, Serena's not very interesting, but she's technically sound. And Madison, look, let's be perfectly honest, Madison is there to coach the women, and that's really about it. She's not bad in the ring, but whatever. I question her marrying Josh Woods, considering that guy's a goddamn piece of shit, but whatever. Maybe she's the smart one in the relationship. And we get to Sarandi Locke after a few minutes. Lexi then interviews Jade, Layla, and Kira. And then interviews Hobbs, who actually talks like a normal human. And Hobbs is going to be a star. He's absolutely going to be a star. Calls him the Monstar. That's not wrong. He kind of looks like a Monstar character. Dax gets a big pop. Caprice joins commentary. Claudio gets a good pop. And Regal is in the corner of Claudio, so it is Claudio versus Dax Harwood, Ring of Honor World Heavyweight Championship match. Watch this. Just fucking watch this. Watch this. Why aren't you watching it now, goddammit? 
I'm not going to go move for move over everything, but I will talk about a few spots that I did enjoy. <clears throat> the big fight feel. Jericho did kind of ruin this being on commentary. He alluded to wanting to face Claudio for the Ring of Honor World Championship, dear fucking God. Jericho in 2010 in Ring of Honor maybe could have done something. 2022 Jericho, fucking hell. That'd be terrible. Great wrestling, as you would expect. Um, Dax is having a career year. Him and Cash are my favorite. They, they may actually take the top spot as my favorite wrestlers of the year. Yes, a tag team will win that. And Dax is doing great. Cash is also great as a singles wrestler. Why aren't they being featured more as a tag team? I don't know. <laughs> Give them some shots in Japan. They have the IWGP War, uh, World Tag Team Championships. Have them compete with those on Strong, even though they have their own tag team championships there. Have them compete. Have them compete at Wrestle Kingdom. Do something. Do something with FTR. Anyway, uh, Claudio focuses on the back. He's a little more heelish here. We got a diving headbutt. Stop doing the diving headbutt. Slingshot bomb for two. <laughs> you know, series of reversals. Nice counters. Um, we got a roll through after a cross body. Dax got two count. Then we got the giant swing. We got a sharpshooter. And then the cross face. That got counter, but Dax could not stop the other sharpshooter. And Dax tapped out, so there you go. Not bad. Good, good. He did get his own sharpshooter on, but he tapped out. Good match. Very good match, in fact. Could easily be one of the best matches of the year, and it happened on a taped show that not that many people watch, which is a shame. I encourage you guys to go back and check this out. If you have this DVR, please check this out. It's a fan-fucking-tastic match. This is worth tuning in for. The rest of the show, eh. Agree, disagree, what I said, like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Ricklin. I'll see you soon.